When geologists from the University of British Columbia were searching for diamonds, they stumbled upon something much more precious. Evidence of a lost continent here on Earth. Incredibly, some geologic samples they obtained contained fragments of material from a long-lost chunk of land that has since disappeared beneath the ocean. It was indeed a once-in-a-lifetime find, and the location of this lost continent is catching many historians off guard. A lost continent eliminated millions of years ago turned up in a very unlikely place. You probably think you know what Earth looks like. Vast expanses of water, the surprisingly small sections of dry land we humans live on, and the familiar arrangement of our continents. But Earth hasn't always been this way. Once upon a time, it had an extra continent. You may be shocked that only 30% of Earth is land. The remaining 70% is made up of the blue stuff. And most of that a whopping 96% or more is ocean saltwater. In fact, given how much of the planet is made of water, it's a wonder we ever had a lost continent to begin with. And if you were paying attention in geography class, you'll know that there are five oceans on Earth. The Atlantic, the Indian, the Pacific, the Antarctic, and the Arctic. The largest of these bodies of water is the Pacific, which sprawls over more than a third of our planet. So, where do the continents fit in? Well, currently, we have seven continents. North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica, and Asenia. And the largest of them all is Asia. It makes up roughly 30% of Earth's land, yes, really. And is home to about 60% of folks on our blue planet. Of course, geography isn't quite that simple. Mind you, some of the continents are connected. Europe and Asia share a single landmass, and so that's sometimes called Eurasia. Some people combine North America and South America, too, referring to it simply as America. And at one point, there was that lost continent. But while the boundaries between continents may seem confusing today, the lines were once even more blurred. That's because there used to be a single supercontinent known as Pangaea. Pangaea formed hundreds of millions of years ago when tectonic plates moved and thrust land together. Again, this may be familiar if you ace geography class. Apparently, the Earth has seven huge plates, six or seven fair-sized ones, and numerous other little ones. And all these plates move and interact. This all explains how mountains, volcanoes, and earthquakes manage to come about and it helps us to comprehend the continents we see today. These apparently started to form around 100 million years ago, when Pangaea split. When Pangaea began to break, the Atlantic Ocean formed and separated the Americas and Africa. India also became severed from Africa. And Australia and Antarctica which were still joined together at this point, drifted off towards the South Pole. But plate tectonics tells us that Earth's geography is constantly in flux, meaning lost continents are always possible. Plate tectonics are pretty violent, too. Around 50 million years ago, continental fragments started to crash together. When Africa clashed with Europe, the Alps were formed. The Himalayas emerged when India smashed into Asia. And a narrow piece of land arrived, connecting North and South America. Australia also broke away from Antarctica to create the world as we see it today. Sounds pretty clear-cut, right? Well, not quite. Along the way, some landmasses seem to have been lost. And one of these is known as Greater Adria, sometimes described as the Eighth Continent. You see, Pangaea initially split into two different major parts. Laurasia in the north, and Gondwana in the south. Laurasia eventually broke up to form what we now know as North America, Asia, and Europe. Gondwana, on the other hand, created Antarctica Australia, South America, and Africa. But that wasn't all. Gondwana also spawned Greater Adria, which was supposedly around the same size as Greenland. A 2019 study concluded that Greater Adria wedged itself beneath the southern part of Europe approximately 100 million to 120 million years ago. Scientists believe that the continent of Greater Adria was already partly submerged to begin with. However, as it moved towards the planet's interior layer which is known as the mantle its own surface flaked away. The continent then rose upwards to eventually create mountains across different countries in Europe. That's why we can't see it anymore. And a scientist named Dow Van Hinsbergen has painted a vivid picture of what Greater Adria's submergence may have looked like. 
Basically, he compared it to an arm being thrust beneath a table. Confused? Read on. In 2019 Van Hinsbergen told Business Insider, suppose you have a sweater on as you push your arm under the table, the sweater sleeve stays behind, getting folded and jutting upward. That's what happened with Greater Adria. And the expert explained that these sweater folds went on to form mountain ranges across Eurasia. Yep, apparently Italy's Apennines, the Swiss Alps and the Himalayas were all caused by Greater Adria. According to Van Hinsbergen and his fellow researchers, Greater Adria parted from Africa around 220 million years ago. Then, around 40 million years after that, it separated from the Iberian Peninsula. And for a time, Greater Adria would have probably appeared as a number of archipelagos. However, somewhere around 100 and 120 million years ago, it was pushed down to the mantle, settling below the south of Europe. Giving an update of where the lost continent is now, Van Hinsbergen revealed, the deepest portions are now at a 932-mile depth below Greece. That's pretty far. Not all of Greater Adria is submerged beneath Europe, mind you. Some of it remained above sea level. Venice and Turin in Italy and Croatia's Istria region are thought to have once been part of the continent. But there's something else you need to know. Geologists from the University of British Columbia have stumbled across another piece of land. And this forgotten continent which broke into fragments approximately 150 million years ago, wasn't hiding in a far-flung location. Oh, no. It was right under America's nose the whole time. You see, parts of the continent have now emerged in the United States neighbor to the north. The discovery of this lost continent was made quite by accident. Geologists had actually been analyzing kimberlite samples when they discovered an ancient piece of the planet's continental crust. Kimberlite, in case you didn't know, is a kind of volcanic rock that formed underground millions of years ago. Sometimes, kimberlite rises to the surface after volcanic activity. Best of all, the rocks can contain diamonds. No wonder geologists are interested. But on this occasion, the University of British Columbia team discovered something much rarer. You got it. The specialists found fragments of a lost continent lurking within their samples. These fragments once formed part of the ancient North Atlantic Craton, a rocky slab of the Earth's crust that eventually split into smaller landmasses. And pieces of the Craton have since come to settle in different parts of the world. How do we know this? It's partly thanks to Maya Kapilova. She's a geology expert from the University of British Columbia, and in 2020, she told Live Science where other known pieces of the lost landmass had ended up. Kapilova explained, one fragment of the North Atlantic Craton is now part of Scotland. More remnants of the North Atlantic Craton had previously been located in Greenland and in the Canadian region of Labrador. Another portion of the ancient continent anchors a section of North America. And the new fragments that Kapilova and her team discovered were also found in this region. More specifically, these bits of the ancient continent were seen in kimberlite samples taken from northern Canada. Announcing the development to live science, Kapilova revealed, we have found one more fragment on Baffin Island. And in another statement released via the University of British Columbia, the geologist explained the significance of the discovery. Kapilova said, Finding these lost pieces is like finding a missing piece of a puzzle. The scientific puzzle of the ancient Earth can't be complete without all of the pieces. But that's not all we know. Because of where the new samples were located, the North Atlantic Craton could have been around 10% larger than we originally realized. The North Atlantic Craton, which split apart around 150 million years ago, is not the only lost continent, however. So, identifying where the Baffin Island samples originally came from required some analysis on the part of the scientists. Luckily, they knew what they were looking for. You see, the parts of the Earth's mantle beneath old continents are made up of 65% olive and a mineral. Orthopyroxene accounts for another 25%. The mantle beneath the North Atlantic Craton, though, it has a slightly different chemistry. It's approximately 85% olivine and 10% orthopyroxene. So, the scientists could compare the ratio of the minerals found in the upper mantles. And as a result, Kapilova claimed that they could say with certainty that sections of Baffin Island had once been linked to the Craton of North America. 
In her statement on the University of British Columbia website, Kapilova added, the mineral composition of other portions of the North Atlantic Craton is so unique there was no mistaking it, it was easy to tie the pieces together. Adjacent ancient Cratons in northern Canada and northern Quebec, northern Ontario, and in Nunavut, have completely different mineralogies. Kapilova also explained how the Baffin Island diamond samples had led to such a significant find. She revealed, for researchers, kimberlites are subterranean rockets that pick up passengers on their way to the surface, the passengers are solid chunks of wall rocks that carry a wealth of details on conditions far beneath the surface of our planet over time. That makes them handier than you think. But the samples taken from Baffin Island came from a point further underground than other locations containing North Atlantic Craton fragments. And that's exciting for geologists. Simply put, this discovery could vastly improve researchers' understanding of Earth's lost ancient continents. Kapilova elaborated to live science, previous reconstructions of the size and location of Earth's plates have been based on relatively shallow rock samples in the crust, formed at depths of 0.6 to 6 miles. With these new findings, our knowledge is literally and symbolically deeper. With these samples, we're able to reconstruct the shapes of ancient continents based on deeper mantle rocks Kapilova added in her statement, given to the University of British Columbia. We can now understand and map not only the uppermost skinny layer of Earth that makes up 1% of the planet's volume. Because of the Baffin Island finds, scientists could piece together the Earth's ancient plates at a much deeper level than before. Previous estimations were based on rocks formed at 0.5 to 6 miles underground. But following the latest discovery, Kapilova revealed some news that may have thrilled the experts. We can put together 124-mile-deep fragments and contrast them based on the details of the deep mineralogy, she said. And that's a big deal. Those Baffin Island samples were taken from property in the Chidliak Kimberlite province. And, originally, the exploration was carried out by Peregrine Diamonds, a company that has since been taken over by De Beers. The fragments themselves are extremely expensive, and they cost a lot of money to collect. No wonder if they potentially have diamonds in them. Naturally, the team at the University of British Columbia were grateful to Peregrine Diamonds and De Beers for allowing them to analyze the samples. Kapilova said as much in her statement, writing, Our partner companies demonstrate a lot of goodwill by providing research samples to UBC, which enables fundamental research and the training of many grad students. But the diamond dealers got something out of it, too. In exchange for the samples, geologists would help the diamond exploration companies locate precious jewels in the future. Kapilova explained, in turn, UBC Research provides the company with information about the deep diamondiferous mantle that is central to mapping the part of the Creighton, with the higher changes to support a successful diamond mine. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.